Hi, I'm Amar al Tai from the Glasgow Interactive Systems Group here at the University of Glasgow. And on behalf of my co-authors, Yasmin abdul Rabur, Sean McDonald, Frank Pollock, and Stephen Brewster, I'll be presenting our work, Keep It Real, Investigating Driver-Cyclist Interaction in Real-World Traffic. Cyclists are vulnerable road users who must share the road with motorized vehicles. This means that they will encounter vehicles in many different traffic scenarios, such as intersections, roundabouts, or even when lane merging. These encounters often result in ambiguities and space-sharing conflicts that require some form of social interaction to resolve. For example, a driver may use a hand gesture to signal a cyclist to proceed at an intersection, or a cyclist may raise their arm to indicate their intent to merge lanes with the driver behind them. With autonomous vehicles joining our road soon, interactions will shift from interpersonal to human-machine, and we must find a way to facilitate AV-cyclist interaction to ensure safe future traffic. We may design AV cyclist interfaces to facilitate interactions between cyclists and autonomous vehicles. But these interfaces need to be versatile enough to facilitate these interactions across many different uh, traffic scenarios. However, there is a lack of foundational knowledge that shows how cyclists and drivers currently interact. This knowledge is important to provide a baseline for how AVs should behave. In our paper, we investigate real driver-cyclist interactions to help designers develop versatile AV cyclist interfaces that extend current everyday interaction behavior and adhere to cyclists' unique needs. We conducted two studies, the first of which was a set of in-the-wild observations. We observed 414 driver-cyclist encounters across five different traffic scenarios. These scenarios were a controlled intersection, a roundabout, an uncontrolled intersection, a cycle lane that merges into traffic, and lane merging. We chose these scenarios based on previous work, vehicle cyclist collision reports, and cycling traffic. We ensured that each scenario had its own unique characteristics. For example, a controlled intersection has, a, a, um, has traffic lights, but an uncontrolled intersection does not. Using an online form, we recorded interaction behavior. This includes the exchanged messages, social cues, driving or cycling behavior, and vehicle signals, such as direction indicators. We found that cyclists and drivers interact differently between the traffic scenarios. For example, interactions were unlikely in the presence of traffic lights at controlled intersections, but when there were no traffic lights in uncontrolled intersections, the uh, cyclists and drivers used a wide variety of techniques to negotiate their right of way. And this suggests that autonomous vehicles will need to exhibit different interaction behaviors depending on the traffic scenario. But the road is a shared and complex social space, and cyclists are exposed to so many different vehicle and traffic control features in their commutes. We needed to understand how much cyclists rely on these features to actually safely navigate the road, as this would inform us on a design space for AV cyclist interfaces and the optimal placements for these interfaces as well. So we conducted a naturalistic cycling study. We recruited 12 commuter cyclists and instrumented them with a pair of eye tracking glasses and a bike computer. The commuter cyclists were instructed with recording two commutes in total. They took their own routes from their homes to their, to their workplace and vice versa. This allowed us to collect cyclists' gaze behavior in real-world traffic. As part of our data analysis, we defined areas of interest on vehicle and traffic control features. We then mapped cyclist gaze fixations to these features so we can understand how much cyclists rely on them in traffic. We then visualized our findings as a heat map representing cyclist gaze fixations toward different vehicle and traffic control features in different traffic scenarios. We noticed that in the presence of traffic control, for example in controlled intersections, cyclists acknowledge traffic control features. When there was little traffic controls for uh, traffic control, for example, in um, uncontrolled intersections where we had road markings, cyclists acknowledged road markings, but they also scanned many different areas on the vehicle as they had the time to do so. But, for example, in lane merging, where both road users were moving, cyclists tended to fixate on certain areas on the vehicle. We used our findings from study one and study two to contribute a set of design guidelines for versatile AV cyclist interfaces. The figure shown on this slide shows an example versatile AV cyclist interface that we developed using our guidelines. 
It makes use of the design space identified in study 2. Overall, we contribute an understanding of how driver-cyclist interaction behavior, which includes the exchanged messages, social cues, and implicit cues or driving and cycling behavior, changes between common traffic scenarios that result in space-sharing conflicts. We also contribute common vehicle and traffic control features that appear in a cyclist's fields of view, and cyclist gaze behaviors toward them. Finally, we contribute a set of design guidelines for versatile AV cyclist interfaces. Thank you, and please do not hesitate to reach out should you have any queries.